Hey there folks all over the world, my name is Dustin Dolby. Thanks for tuning in to Workflow. Make sure to subscribe if you're new here. Today we're gonna to use speed lights to build up a color spot behind our product photography. So let me run you through my workflow for achieving this with really limited gear. And this is a cool technique because you can invoke a lot of energy into your shot just by bringing out a little splash of color. We kept it kind of monochromatic today, but it cuts out what would otherwise be a catalog black shot, like a pretty traditional shot. It's sort of a moody look and it almost resonates with you. When you see it, you feel something before you even think something, I find. It kind of has that effect on images. And it's just a cool ace to have up your sleeve. You want to know how to do this kind of thing, I think. So we're using a Yongnuo 563, which is like a notoriously low cost speed light. If you want to hear more about this speed light or any of our gear, we link it all in the description on Amazon below. So let's just put this at like a 30 second power and I'm just bare bulbing it for a second. We're going to throw this in a strip box in all reality, but Honestly, we're not going to obsess over the lighting too much today. We mainly just wanted to chat about how to get that beautiful glow of light behind our Nivea, which is actually resting on a little piece of tack right now. That's how it's resting up there and it's working really well. I'm impressed. So yeah, we're going to light this pretty indirectly. We'll keep it turned away from our background, of course. And then if we wanted to put a little color of spot behind that or a splash of color, we need to control the light. So we can gel our light blue, which is a good option, and we've already selected out a blue gel. But to control the light, we need a grid. Now, originally I thought a snoot might be a good option when I didn't know much about product photography, but a rogue three-in-one grid is a great product for speed lights, because then on the wall you'll get a natural fall off, almost like a radial gradient, which is just a great solution if you want a nice quality to how your light's fading out. And I haven't seen a lot of solutions for speed lights, so kudos to Rogue for making this. We're going to use a nice lightweight light stand here just to project that spot onto a consistent area on the background. I already worked out this angle with the angle of incidence and kind of projected where that spot needs to go, but I'll tether along with you guys and you know, we'll work it out as we go here. Hey, that's not too bad for my first shot actually here. I'll make a few adjustments. We'll try to sit it right behind our product. Although you can get creative with where you put your spot. Okay, that's sitting pretty nicely. Now we could probably tweak this a lot and make it magnificent, but we'll keep it fairly casual today. What do you guys think? So we're getting pretty punchy color there, you notice? And the reason we're getting punchy color is because the background's so dark, right? Our angled away light is doing a lot to help that, right? If you were more casual and had that angled towards the wall, you'd end up losing all that drama and you'd lose all that technical contrast that you are really bringing the beauty out of. So I'm gonna turn this back here. Now there's a trick you can use to get away with a bit of spill on your background and it involves blending modes. Let me show you quickly. I'll turn this light off and we'll just get a blue frame by itself. And first of all, look at this. This is what you want to see. Like look at this nice dark contrast. It's almost a complete silhouette and you just have a beautiful blue radial glow. So that's a good test you can shoot just to make sure, you know, your light is set up properly before you complexify things. But this is a useful exposure. What I'm going to do now is a quick switcheroo. I'll keep you guys in the tether here and I'm just switching the light. So now the blue lights off and we just have the primary light. Great. So now if you're spilling too much light on your background, you'll be able to see that in this exposure because the background won't be completely black. And by having these separate, you gain a little bit of control because you can blend these two together on light mode. Ready? They'll blend together completely on light mode. And last time I did this on light mode live in my tether like this, People were confused and they left me comments asking me about how I masked it together. You, there's literally no masking involved. It's just these two layers on light and blending mode. And then you have control of each layer and things aren't baked into one file you can't separate. Literally, you can try it for yourself. Screen cap this image, just full screen and cap that, and screen cap this image, and then bring those puppies into Photoshop and put them above one another in a layer and set the top one to light mode. And you'll see they seamlessly blend together because of the properties of each layer. One is like a silhouette, Whereas one is the inverse of that and they go together beautifully. Now this one side is screaming for more light. So I'm going to get both these lights firing again. So a simple card just to wake things up on the far side here. And that's a beautiful solution because just with one or two speed lights now we're creating a pretty sophisticated look. And you see what that did in waking up the far side. It's just like having another strip box over there or something, essentially, if you zoom in. You see it wakes up the side, but clearly it infringes on our canvas. So we're comfortable comping that out. And I'll make sure to show you guys how I do that. But 
that's a pretty sophisticated system for such a humble approach using a couple of lights and you know a piece of card. Now could you use other colors in this? Absolutely you could. Uh, why don't we throw on a smoky pink? So we're gonna switch out the blue for a smoky pink which came in the gel pack. And you know that'll give us a splash of color in a way a monochromatic look really couldn't. So once we've switched that out, we'll pop off another exposure. And there you go. Now this is a cool solution because it's so immediate. And this is one of the reasons I do advocate the C-stand or the tripod extension for putting your spot in a consistent area. That way you could completely have a large session, like a multi-session of shots that you export to somebody or upload to Dropbox or a shared tether folder. And you could convey many different color ideas and get the ball rolling. And you could export that and relay that information in no time because of the immediate results of the gel. And that's pretty cool. If you want to go to the digital side of things, we made a course how to photograph simple products to look dramatic. Check that out after this. It shows you a digital solution to a backglow. But I love the immediacy of being able to convey all this information in a matter of minutes, right? So why don't we take a little bit of a deeper look inside of Photoshop. Okay, folks, here we are. Inside Camera Raw, make sure to pour yourself coffee, make sure to subscribe. And like I said, you can bake all the data into raw files or isolate the lights. So two different editing styles, I'll touch on each, but let me just show you a few settings I do to make sure things are looking smooth and your color spot's looking its best. So I'm gonna hold Alt and click this black node. It shows me the black point. And you see things are pretty scratched up, but as we crush these into a perimeter of black, it'll actually eat up a bit of the imperfections and we'll ensure that we have a perimeter of dark pixels in case we want to expand our composition or create different ad copies or any of that. What I'm gonna do is actually, I'll do the same thing with my white point, I'll hold Alt, and you'll see I'm just keeping it a little shy of when I actually clip the label. So there's some white data presenting itself up here, that's cool. I can hold Control and grab this frame above it and hit Synchronize and just synchronize everything so when I comp them together, it'll be really seamless, right? That's a magical thing that happens when you you know, have consistent lighting. And that's the nice thing about using flash, I'll open these up, is you can create really consistent environments. So what I'm gonna do is hit our positional tool and literally click and drag this photo into this tab up here and then release it. That's how I like doing that. And then I'll use my smart guides to just click them together almost magnetically. It's a really quick way to speed up your workflow guys. It's two seconds how to do that. Just make sure snaps on, extras on, and where are we here? Where are we here, I got lost smart guides is on that's a trifecta and that's really quick way to speed up your workflow make sure everything is nice and aligned so i'll align those and i'm gonna blow a quick switcheroo here switch the order and this top layer i just want it to exist along the left hand side here just to give that nice accent so i'm gonna hold alt and click this button which will invert the mask then i'll click that layer that black mask hit b to bring up my brush and white is my color here and now i can paint in where i want this to exist and obviously I just want to accent it down this side. Another thing to look out for when you're doing reflections, and this is why I made sure my card was outside of where my reflection in the bottom is, is that you can paint detail often into your internal reflection, and that's a nice thing. So we have a little bit of detail in there. It's a different style having it silhouetted, but I think that does a lot to lift up the side of our product. And it's a great way to enhance what would otherwise be an unusable shot with a quick mask. I want to actually merge these to begin with because I think these are looking good. And why don't I name this base? I'm going to duplicate this Control J and hit J to bring up my patch tool. I'm just going to make a few simple patches around our product. I'm going to hold Shift to grab a few things at once and sort of mass produce this retouching. And I'll just resample them somewhere else. And I like to duplicate those layers so I can see an on and off of what I did. And that helps me understand what I'm actually kind of editing. Now, like I said, this is scratch to heck. It's actually a lost cause. But let me show you something you can do if you do have a lost cause kind of situation. You can recreate surfaces um, pretty easily in Photoshop. Let me show you a quick thing I do. I'm going to make a new layer above everything. And from my base layer, I'm going to sample. I hit I to bring up that eyedropper tool. And I'm going to sample a pretty rich blue color from the label itself. Now, I don't want to affect this effect onto the word Nivea cream or 30 milliliters. So what I want to do is grab the magic wand tool even though these aren't connected, it's gonna select all the values that are similar within the tolerance of 32. So it's gonna grab the label here, and that's perfect. I'm gonna hit Control shift i to invert that selection. So now I'm selecting what isn't white pixels. Now in this new layer above everything, since I'm selecting not the label, the inverse of the label, I can hit B to bring up my brush, and now I can paint this color, and I can actually just recreate the label a bit. 
And this is pretty sloppy. I normally would never do this, but it's a cool trick to have up your sleeve. And sometimes I'll use this in a smaller context, like I'll repair a small area of an image. But considering how scratched this was, I just wanted to show you guys this and show you how it's kind of strange. Like it's a flat look for sure. But I mean, that's not bad for like a two second retouch of a surface. I'm going to clean up a few more areas here. Just around my image, making sure it looks its best. And you really want a nice clean piece of plexiglass when you are doing color spots because the quality of the plexiglass itself really reveals itself in the gradient. Like all the scratches and stuff you're seeing are mostly the plexiglass, not what it's reflecting. One thing I want to do here is correct a few of the colors I'm seeing show up here. So what I think I'm going to do is, let me see, I'll make a new layer similar to our solution up here with the recreation. I'm going to sample the color once again and I can hit B to bring up my brush and instead of normal mode, we'll just go ahead and put this one on color. And you see now I can paint on color mode. I'll just paint over that. And if I turn it off and on, it's a pretty subtle uh, distinction. Hopefully you can notice the difference there. And that's just something I do just sort of make things look consistent. Wherever I see some weird hue going on, I might paint a color layer over even down here. Is that called for? Maybe, maybe not. But I think that's a pretty good correction on the highlight to keep things more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here, guys? Monochromatic. There we go. Like one thing we could do is go to selective color. And in the blues here, what I'm going to do is raise all these values, which is going to you have a very weird effect on our image. You might like it, you might not, probably not. What I'm going to do is invert this so it is black, it's not showing up. and hit G to bring up my gradient tool, and I'm doing a linear gradient, white to black. So white to black in mask terms is shows up, fading into doesn't show up. So what do I want to do here? Well, I want to give some movement to the lighting, and it's going to look horrible to start because it's going to affect everything, which is kind of confusing. But what I want to do is I'm just looking at the face here, and I'm seeing... How if I can kind of skirt some darkness in the side, I can get a nice sort of 45 degree angle glow. It's not even a gradient really. It's just a bit of movement happening in the luminosity, which can look classy. And we'll we'll pull this back in a second. I'm being a little bit picky here, but okay, maybe something like that looks nice. What I'm going to do is hit Control G to group that effect and then give the grouping a layer mask. Now that's something I often do because now I can change the shape in this mask to where that effect's applied and then I can remask it so what I'm going to do is control I again to get rid of that effect. Hint B to bring up my brush. And I'm just going to mask this in on the face of our cosmetic. And it looks a little too drastic to begin with, but this is at 100% opacity. We can definitely dial that back in a moment. So we'll do it pretty quick, but that's good. You see there's some movement there. That's pretty dramatic. And what we can do here is just go to our selective color and we can fade that in. So it's a little more subtle. And like I said, just has a little right to left movement with the light which looks pretty nice and makes things a little more interesting. What do you think? Okay, now to all my friends out there shooting with one light, whether it's for a limitation reason or maybe a technical reason, I'd like to show you how to build up a similar workflow in a few moments just with these two frames. And we've already demonstrated you could shoot this theoretically with one light, just putting this top layer in light and mode. And that's magical to begin with, but there's a few benefits we didn't discuss earlier. Like, look at this top layer by itself. It is... Uh, it's pretty dusty. Let's check it out here. I'm going to crank the curves and wow, that's a really honest look at how dusty that was. So something to point out is that the top light is really accenting this dust and the top light isn't present in this shot. So what you can do is keep this image as your base image and this top dusty layer, I can just mask it. So really I'm just taking data from this area. I'm going to make a bit of an ellipse here and I'll just take information from this area. So I'll give it a mask with this button. When a selection is present and you hit this button, it uses it as your mask. So now I'm really just taking this information and getting rid of all that dust out there, right? I'll feather my mask so it introduces a little more subtly and I'll put that in. So that's a really quick comp with a mask and that helps you reduce dust just in an instance. That's a cool tip. Also, now that you've isolated things, you could do a whole raft of effects. Like you could change the color of just the background. That alone blew my mind when I first figured that out. I never seen someone make a tutorial just showing me that. So, hey, make sure to thumb up the video if you appreciate that one, because I think that's a pretty cool tip. You can make a template, right? And you can create a bit of a system where you're just banging out color renders. Because then you can spend your time retouching just this shot and present many colors that are meticulously retouched. So it sort of multiplies your efforts, and I find that really rewarding. So just using blending modes and a few masks, I mean, this stuff can be achieved with or without an integral setup where you're shooting it all in one image. And I think that's a ton of fun. Hey, if you actually like doing this stuff often, make sure to join our Facebook group. That way your Facebook feed can get 
you know, all the posts of different lighting setups. People post lighting setups every day. And just make sure to check that out. It's in the pinned comment. I'm about to go to a cottage and hang out for a week. So hopefully I'll have a nice productive week at the cottage or who knows, maybe I'll just enjoy myself. I'm not gonna, not gonna pin myself down here. But hey guys, I hope you have a really productive week. Leave me a comment below. Let me know who you are. I'll get to know you guys. And until then, take care. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.